Hello and welcome to the section of the Circuit Analysis Tutor. Uh, in this section we're going to begin a journey of talking about new and different kinds of circuit analysis techniques. The first one that we're going to talk about is called the node voltage method of circuit analysis. And it's something that all students that are studying circuits are going to have to master and it really occupies a good chunk of your course. It's one of the core fundamental circuit analysis methods. So I want to take a few minutes to put it into context with what we've already learned. Uh, in the previous lessons, we've learned uh, a lot about the basics of circuits, uh, voltage, uh, current, resistance, Ohm's law, Kirchhoff's laws. And we learned that we can analyze pretty much any resistive circuit with Kirchhoff's laws. And I'm going to tell you right now, Kirchhoff's laws are always valid. They're always true. They're always something you can go to and use if you need to. And we did lots and lots of problems writing down the equations with Kirchhoff's laws and solving them and finding the currents and the voltages everywhere in the circuit, which is what we're trying to do when we solve circuits. So Kirchhoff's laws are bulletproof. They're always there. You're not really trying to replace Kirchhoff's laws here. It's just that if you remember back, as the circuits get a little more complicated, and what I mean by complicated is just more branches and more resistors and things like that, then it quickly becomes that you're going to have a lot of Kirchhoff equations. Remember, we're writing those node equations with the, the currents coming in and out, the Kirchhoff current law, and then sometimes we have to write the Kirchhoff voltage laws. And it, it can quickly, even for relatively simple circuits, it can quickly lead to four or five equations to solve that you have to then go and get a determinant to solve the system if you're going to use a matrix method or if you're going to do other methods of solution. It just gets, it gets to be a little bit cumbersome to work with five simultaneous equations to solve a fairly simple circuit. The other problem, well, so to speak, problem with Kirchhoff's laws, solving circuits with Kirchhoff's laws, is the fact that there wasn't really sort of like a rigid methodology to it. I taught you what the Kirchhoff current law was. I taught you what the Kirchhoff voltage law was. And I taught you how to write those equations. But I told you you had a lot of latitude. Like maybe you want to write two Kirchhoff current laws and one voltage law if you need three equations to solve everything. Well, you could also solve everything by making maybe making one Kirchhoff current law and two voltage laws. So the exact equations that you write really is kind of like flexibility up to you solving the problem. There's no rigidly defined way to do it, which is kind of nice to have freedom, but also kind of it, it kind of leaves a little bit ambiguous exactly how to proceed with the circuit. So here we're going to learn about the node voltage method. Uh, and later on in the course, we're going to learn about the mesh current method. Both of these methods of circuit analysis are just tools in your tool bag that you can pull out and use them when it's necessary and needed. Sometimes it's going to be simple to solve a circuit and easier to use just Kirchhoff's laws. So you do that, right? Sometimes it's going to be easier, depending on how the circuit's laid out, to use the node voltage method. And sometimes, we'll learn later, that the mesh current method is going to be the easiest way to go. So it's just like any time in math, you have different tools, different techniques. So we're learning all of the methods here. Now the node voltage method mainly does two things for you uh, that, that really help you. The first one, and the most important one, is when you use the node voltage method, almost always you're going to need less equations to write down to describe that circuit than you did if you just use Kirchhoff's laws. That's really the main reason we use it. If you look at two circuits and solve one of them using just Kirchhoff's laws, and then you use, solve the same circuit again using the node voltage method, for the node voltage method is going to require fewer equations, fewer simultaneous equations. That means if you're using matrix methods, smaller matrices, smaller determinants, faster to write it down in your test, everything's going to be faster. So node voltage method is vastly superior uh, in that regard. The second thing it does for you is it's a little bit more rigidly defined. In other words, there's an A, B, C to exactly what equations you write down and that's just the way you have to write them down. So really when you compare and contrast just using Kirchhoff's laws versus using node voltage method, in the Kirchhoff's laws, you get lots of flexibility. You can write whatever equations you want, whatever nodes you want, whatever you know circle, circuits you want as far as the KVL loops. You can write whatever you want as long as you have enough equations, but you're going to require a lot of equations. For node voltage, it's much more rigidly defined. I'm going to show you how to write the equations, and you have to write them this way. And once you write them this way, those are the equations for the node voltage method. However, even though it's a little more rigid, it's bulletproof, and it requires fewer equations, and that's really the main advantage for it. Okay, so that's basically what the node voltage is. It requires fewer equations. Now, before we go any further, I need to uh, give you a few definitions. So instead of just tell you 
a few definitions. Let me just draw a very, very simple circuit to illustrate what I'm talking about when I say uh, definitions here. So here's a very, very simple circuit. Let me put two resistors here, two resistors here. We'll just connect it here. And then over here, we'll just stick. And we're not going to solve this, by the way. I'm just using this for definitions. So what we're going to do is come down here. So a very simple equation because, or a very simple circuit, because when I, uh, when you read your book, they're going to use some terms and you really need to know what they're talking about. The first thing is, and we've talked about this before some, but we need to talk about it again. What is a node? Because this is the node voltage method. So you really have to understand what the book is talking about when you're looking at your textbook or what your professor's talking about. A node, quite simply, is any interconnection of two components, two or more components. That's a node. So let me give you an example. This guy is a node because we're connecting two resistors together. It's just a wire here. So when you build it, yeah, it's just a wire in between, or maybe you just take these two resistors and hook them together. But it doesn't matter exactly how you do it, but the fact is you have two components connected together. So that's a node. This guy right here is also called a node. So if you're on the test and your professor says name, you know, no, the nodes, you know, the nodes here in the drawing, then you would point definitely to those two things and call them a node. Now notice this is also a node right here because here I have a resistor, a resistor, and a resistor, three things that are joined here. But because it's three or more, we have a special name. We call it an essential node. So anytime you have three or more objects, we call it an essential node. Down here, we also have an essential node. So this is called an essential node. Okay, it's just a definition, folks. Basically, a node is anytime two things are connected. Um, but you know what? Nodes are kind of trivial. These two resistors, it's, it's just two things connected. It's, it's not really considered a node that you would really worry yourself with when you're solving a circuit. Because the current going through both of these guys is really going to be the same because it's going through both of them. So yes, it's a node technically, but for the node voltage method, you're not going to concern yourself with these little piddly nodes that have two things connected together. So here's the punchline. For the node voltage method, when we talk about node voltages, which we're going to talk about in just a second, the nodes we, we're talking about and that we care about are only these essential nodes. So basically, when you look at a circuit, you see three or more interconnections, that's an essential node. Those are the nodes that we care about when we write the node voltage equations. That's all we care about. So you don't really look at this and you don't really look at this. You only look at these two guys being the essential nodes. Okay, so I could write all these things down, but honestly, uh, I'm gonna just tell you quickly some key things about the node voltage method and you're going to understand it and get practice from actually solving problems. So instead of writing a bunch of you know, definitions and things down, one, two, three, four, five. I'm just gonna tell you some very important things here, so make sure you understand the following. So the node voltage method basically consists of four steps, and you're going to get experience with these steps as we solve problems, but here they are. First one, identify the essential nodes. All right, makes sense, it's a node voltage method. I just told you all we care about is essential nodes. So you need to look at your circuit and identify which ones are, are the essential nodes. And if it helps you, put a big fat dot only on top of the ones that are the essential nodes. That's very helpful, so do that for yourself if you need to. Uh, then you need to choose one of these essential nodes as what we call a reference node. Um, and so it's a little difficult to explain why we have a reference node until we solve a real problem. But basically we have two nodes to choose from. This one up here and this one. That's all we care about for a node voltage method. We have to pick one of them to be a reference node, right? And so it's, it's a little difficult, again, ahead of time to tell you what, what this is all about until we actually solve a problem. But for the sake of argument here, most of the time you're going to choose the essential node with a, as many connections as you can find on the bottom of your drawing most of the time. And it's just a reference. Remember when we, this is an aside, remember when we talked a little bit about voltage in general, right? We said we always have, you know, we have, when you have a meter and you measure a voltage across an object, you have that you have a, a black lead on your, on your voltmeter and you have a, a red lead. And that voltage that you're measuring with that meter is in reference to whatever you're touching with the black lead. That's the reference. When you measure the voltage drop across something, it has to be relative to something. You're measuring the voltage drop across that object from the black lead of your measurement uh, device, like your ohmmeter or your voltmeter, to the red lead. 
So your reference in that case is the black lead. You're seeing, you're basically seeing how many volts higher than the black lead is the red lead when you measure something in a circuit. So for our reference, we just need to pick something in order to do these node voltage equations, and we need to pick an essential node. So you're going to pick almost always the one on the bottom of the drawing that has the most number of interconnections. Here we have three interconnections, so that's going to be the obvious uh, reference node. But as we do more problems, you're going to get the hang of which one to pick, so don't stress out about that too much right now. Okay. The next thing we're going to do, first thing we identify the central node, second thing we pick a reference node. Third thing, we write node voltage equations. Okay. These node voltage equations are going to be re in reference to the reference node we picked. So I haven't told you how to do it yet, but we're going to write some equations and they're going to be in, in reference to the reference node that we picked, which we just talked about. And we'll show you how to do that here in just a second. And finally, uh, for n number of essential nodes, you need to completely describe the circuit in minus one node voltage equations. So what that means is if you have two essential nodes like we have here, you only need one node voltage equation to completely describe that circuit, to completely solve that circuit. If you have a more complicated drawing with four essential nodes, then you only need three node voltage equations to solve it. If you have ten essential nodes, you only need nine node voltage equations to solve it. And if you go back and compare some of these circuits we're going to work in a second to what we've done in the past, you'll find that it it's vastly reduces the number of equations compared to the, to the Kirchhoff laws, solving the circuit with Kirchhoff laws as we did before. So if you, need, if you have uh, you know, five essential nodes in a drawing, you'll need four node voltage equations. If you solve the same equations or solve the same circuit with the uh, uh, Kirchhoff's laws, you would have actually had to use more equations to, to describe the same thing. All right, node voltage method is much like everything else. You can talk about it, uh, you can play games with it, trying to understand it, but until you actually do something, it's going to be very difficult to really wrap your brain about, around. So what we're gonna do is solve a very simple circuit using the node voltage method, a circuit that you already know how to solve with uh, the Kirchhoff laws that we talked about before and the ideas of Ohm's law and things like that. So it's gonna be a simple circuit, but it's just to illustrate the point, and as we climb our way out, we'll see that we have more complicated circuits that we can tackle. So for this particular one, what I want to do is draw the circuit like this. So what we have, this is 10 volts, okay, then we have a resistor right here, a resistor right here, a resistor there, a resistor over here, and then a current source like this. And let me make sure I label everything. This is one ohm, this is five ohms, this is two ohms, this is 10 ohms, and this is three amps. So the question is, solve this circuit a lot of times. You know, in a test you might, they might tell you, uh, you know, find the current in this leg. We're going to do some problems in a minute where you're asked to find specific current in this leg. We'll get to that later. For now, if you're just given an open-ended problem, solve the circuit, then for the node voltage method, what that means is you have to find the node voltages. The voltages at all of the essential nodes is what you're really trying to find. And once you do that, you know, basically the end game is you write these equations, you find these node voltages. Once you find them, Anything else in the circuit can be found. They're like the key that unlocks everything. Let me show you what I'm talking about. What we need to do first, according to what we said, is we need to identify the essential nodes. So notice this is a node because this is connected to the resistor, but it's not essential because it's only two things. But this is a, an essential node. So let's help ourselves out put a dot here because I have three items interconnected. That's an essential node. This is also an essential node because I have three items interconnected. Now look at the bottom of the circuit. Everything is connected together along the bottom, all the branches here. So this whole entire, if you could just kind of draw a dotted line, the entire bottom of the circuit is one giant node. That's one thing you really need to make sure you, um, you, you, you wrap your brain around. A lot of times you look at the bottom here and it looks like different nodes because this is a node and this is a node. But really when you think about it, if you, could, if you wanted to build the circuit, you would literally be joining all of these things at one common point. Just because it's drawn spread out here is just the way it's drawn. Everything's coming to one common point because this is one perfect wire here. 
So really, this is one giant node. It's not two different nodes. It's one giant essential node. So we'll just put a dot here, just to, even though we have to recognize that it encompasses everything, we're just going to put the dot here. So when we look at this thing, the first thing we're told to do is identify your essential nodes. These are the essential nodes. There's only three essential nodes. So right away you know that with the node voltage method, you're only going to require how many equations? Two equations to solve this circuit. Because we have three essential nodes, that means two equations. The second thing we're going to need to do is pick a reference node. I told you, it's almost always going to be at the bottom of the drawing, and it's, you want to try to pick a reference node that has the most number of interconnections. So here we have one item, two items, three items, four items interconnected at the, at the point. That is just going to make sense for the essential node uh, reference point. So we put a little triangle here. That represents commonality or reference. So whenever you see something like this drawn anywhere, it means this is your reference that you're measuring everything relative to. In this case, we're going to find these node voltages, these two node voltages up here, with respect to our reference. That's very important that you understand. This is our reference, and what we have figured out is that we only require two node voltage equations. And they're going to represent this voltage. This is called a node voltage, because it's the essential node here. And here's another node voltage. What we're going to try to do when we solve this guy is find those reference voltages. Find those node voltages, is what I'm trying to say. These two node voltages at the top. We'll call them V1 and V2, whatever, it doesn't matter. Once you find those node voltages, the, everything else in the circuit can be found. The current can be found here, the current can be found here, the current can be found here, the current can be found here. Everything is described, believe it or not. Now, if you go back and think about it for a second, if you were to solve this problem with Kirchhoff current law and Kirchhoff voltage law, you definitely are going to need more than two equations. So just by looking at it and saying, okay, I only need two equations, that's a huge help right there. So we've identified our essential nodes. We've picked one of them to be a reference. What we're trying to solve for is what are these voltages here? Those are called our node voltages that we care about. So just to make it a little bit easier to understand, I'm going to label this essential node, essential node 1, and I'm going to label this node essential node 2. You don't really have to do this on your paper, but I'm doing it to make it a little easier to reference what I'm talking about. We need to find the voltage at node 1 and the voltage at node 2. And because of this, I'm going to label this voltage, the voltage at this node, I'm going to label it V sub 1, because this is node 1. And I'm going to label this one here um, V sub 2. Now, I want you to study this before we get too much farther. What we've done is we've said, okay, this is a node voltage. I want to find out what that is. So I'm going to label it myself and call it V sub 1, and it's going to be the voltage of this node with respect to the reference node we've chosen. That's why the minus signs are down here at the bottom. Very important. We choose a reference node, and then we define all the node voltages with respect to that reference node. So that's why V sub 1 is measured with respect to this guy down here. So if I were taking my volt, my voltmeter, like I was talking about, you put the black lead here and the red lead here, that means you're measuring the voltage with respect to the black lead. This is the reference that I was talking about. V sub 2 is also measured, notice I have another negative sign, it's also measured with respect to the reference node we've chosen. Of course, this reference node is all connected along the bottom, so V sub 2 is the same as measuring V sub 2 here because they're all connected together, but just for the sake of clarity, I'm measuring V2 with respect to the reference, I'm measuring V1 with respect to the reference. So I know I've spent a lot of time dealing with making the drawing look beautiful, but I want to do that because it's important for you to do that. If you skip these steps and you say, okay, I'm going to do node voltage method, you get down there and you start writing equations, you're going, to, you're going to screw it up, okay? Because you have to have everything labeled so that you understand what to do next. We have a reference node. We have the, both node voltages on the drawing. The next thing we want to do, finally, is write the node voltage equations. So we need two node voltage equation. We need two node voltage equations. Okay, so the first one, okay, I'm going to write it like this. At essential node 1. To write a node voltage equation, let's say this one here. To write a node voltage equation, we're basically going to kind of use Kirchhoff's current law. That's basically what we're going to do. 
we're going to try to write an equation that expresses the current coming out of this node and away from node one. So, yes, I'm fully aware that this is a current, uh, that this is producing current and it's most likely shooting current down here. I'm aware of that. Over here, I'm aware that you have current probably coming into this node. But for the purpose, this is so important, for the purpose of the node voltage method, you don't care what you think you know about the circuit. When you write your node voltage equations, you just pretend that all of the current is coming away from this node and you write all of the equations in the same way. So when I write the node voltage equation here, I'm gonna pretend there's, coming out of, there's currents coming out of this node, out of this node, out of this node. I'm gonna write a node voltage equation there, summing up all of those currents and setting them equal to zero. Then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. And even though it's not totally true that all the currents coming out of the node doesn't matter, the sign of the answers is gonna take care of everything. So, when I'm here, I know that there has to be some current here. I'm gonna pretend it's coming away from this node. How do I write that current? Well, remember, remember, we'll do a little aside here. V is equal to I R. So if you're solve for the current anywhere, it's gonna be V over R. I is equal to V over R. So when I'm looking for the current coming away from this node, this is how I'm gonna write it. I'm gonna say V1 minus this voltage, 10, over the one ohm I have right here. This term right here is expressing the current coming away from this node. And you might look at that and say, what is he talking about? What you need to do is figure out what is the voltage drop across this resistor? Because if you can find the voltage drop across a resistor, you know the current flowing in that resistor and then you know that's what's coming out of that node. So the way you figure out what this current is, is you say, okay, there's a voltage V1 at this node. This is 10 volts here. So the, the difference between these two voltages must be the voltage drop across this resistor. And you always, again, pretend, even if it's not true, you pretend that the current is coming out away from your node. So that's why we always write it V1 minus 10 uh, over one, because you're basically pretending for just a moment that V1 is greater than 10, so you have the higher voltage here, minus this guy, that's gonna give you a voltage drop this way for the current to come out. It's so important that you understand that. You'll get it as we do more and more equations, more and more node voltage equations, but it's so incredibly important that you understand that. Let me keep going, and then we'll, we'll, you'll get the hang of it. Okay, plus, what is the current coming down this path here? Well, that's a little bit easier because it's just the voltage across this resistor is given by V1 that we've labeled. So V1 over five, I is equal to V over R. So that's the current in this leg, again, going away from the node. Plus, what's the current going through this resistor? Again, we have to pretend the current's going this way. So it's gonna be V1, this voltage at this node, minus V2, because we walk around this is the voltage with respect to the reference, V2 over two. That's all the currents and all the legs, and that must equal to zero. What we've basically done here is use Kirchhoff's current law, right? Kirchhoff's current law is always valid. And what we've done is we've sort of used Kirchhoff's current law in combination with this node voltage concept to write a simple, well, it doesn't look so simple, but you'll see in a minute, relatively simple equation. And what we've basically done is we've said, okay, here's a node. Kirchhoff's current law says all the current summed up at a node must be zero. That's what it has to be. Everything summed together has to be equal to zero. That's what it has to be. Everything here is just a term for each branch here. The middle one is the easiest to understand because it's just I is equal to V over R. That's the current flowing away from this node. So this one should be easy for you to understand. The other two is very important that you understand how I've written it here. I've done V1 minus 10 because I'm pretending the current's flowing away. So the voltage here, V1, I'm sort of pretending, even if, because I don't know what V1 is, but I'm pretending that it's, it's the bigger voltage. So V1 minus this 10 volts is gonna give me the voltage across this resistor going this way. So basically you go up to your node and back around divided by the resistance. So the difference in the voltages is gonna give me this voltage across the resistor divided by one. I is equal to V over R. Over here, again, you start from your reference, you go up to your node, V1 minus V2, that's gonna give me the voltage drop across this resistor in this direction, V over R, where R is two ohms. 
So I hope you understand how I've written the equation. If you get lost, the only thing you have to remember is if you're working on this node, just start from your reference, go up to your node, that's the V1, minus any other voltage drops, 10 volts, that gives me this voltage drop over R. V over R, V over R. So you pop up to your node that you're working on and you go around here. This is another voltage here. Um, the reason we use the other node voltage here is because when we get around here, this, since we've defined it to be the voltage drop from this node down to our reference, then this is the only other voltage that we care about. So notice that we have an equation in V1 and V2, two variables, all right? So let's write another equation at the other node. We'll again, we'll find that we have another equation in V1 and V2, two equations, two unknowns. All right, so let's go and do that right now. So let's say, at node two. Let's go and write the equation at node two. That's this guy right here. So the first thing we need to do is write the current flowing out of this node through this branch here. So what we're going to have is we go up to our node V2 minus V1, V2 minus V1 over the resistance here is two ohms. So I is equal to V over R. We just have to subtract these node voltages to give us the voltage drop across our resistor in this direction. V2 is first because we're basically pretending V2 is now bigger because we're dealing with this node. And so everything is in reference to the node you're dealing with. V2 comes first because it you pop up to V2, you subtract V1, that's going to imply the current's going this way over 2. Plus, what's the current in this leg here? What does it look like here? Here we have V2, but again, this is all connected. So this V2 is really V2 across this resistor. So it's gonna be V2 over 10 plus. And then finally, we look in the other leg here. We don't even have to do any node voltage business because we know what the current is here. But again, when we write our node voltage equations, we're always writing it with respect to current flowing away from our essential nodes. And this current is going into the node. So instead of a plus, we actually write it as a minus three. And that kind of stuff's important because you might gloss over a sign, but if you get the sign wrong, you totally don't get the problem right at all. So again, before we solve this, notice we have two equations, V1 and V2 are the two unknowns. And I haven't shown you how yet, but once we solve this and find V1 and V2, we have found the node voltages. Once you have those, you can find anything else you want in the circuit. The circuit is what we call solved. All right, so again, I wanna go over this really quickly. For this current here, V2 minus V1 gives us the drop across the two ohm resistor. That voltage over the, current, over the resistance is the current there. The current here is simply V2 over 10, I is equal to V over R. And the current here is the current flowing in, so we make it negative like this. All right, so. Let's draw a little line here, and let's, let's make a little bit of simplification. So what we're going to do now is work on, and you can do this anywhere you want. Here it gets to be a little bit of technique. I'm doing it my way. But this is just V1 minus 10 over 1. So really, it's V1 minus 10. It's all divided by 1, so that just stays the same. Here we have 1 over 5. We know that when you divide that, that's 0 0.2. So I'll call it 0 0.2 V1. Uh, one half is 0.5, so what I'm going to say is plus 0 0.5 V1 minus 0 0.5 V2 equals 0. This is just 0 0.5 here and here, and I sort of split it up with V1 minus V2. Okay, and then finally, to simplify this further, we have V1 here, we have 0 0.2 V1 here, and we have 0.5 V1 here, so we add those together, we get 1.7 um, V sub 1. And then for V sub 2, we have negative 0.5, negative 0 0.5 V sub 2. And then we have minus 10, don't forget that, is equal to 0. We'll just leave it like that for now. So this is sort of an important simplification. And then the next step, let's go ahead and change colors to green here. Let's take this equation and try to simplify it here. So this one, we have one half, so that's 0 0.5, 0 0.5 V sub two. We'll use parentheses to make it clear. And then we have minus 0 0.5 V sub one, like that. This guy, one over 10 is 0 0.1, so it's 0 0.1 V sub two. 
We'll keep the parentheses for now. Minus three is equal to zero. All right, and then finally, let's change over to black. For V sub one, all we have is this, so we're going to have negative 0 0.5 V sub one. V sub two, 0.5 plus that is 0 0.6. V sub two minus three is equal to zero. Okay, so let's go ahead and move over to the other board, and let's write down finally our system of equations. So here, 1.7 v1 minus 0.5 v2. So we have 1.7 v1 minus 0 0.5 v2. Uh, and then we have minus 10 is equal to zero. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna write it equals positive 10. I just move the 10 over to the other side. All right, making it look like more of a real equation. Down here, negative 0.5 v1, negative 0.5 v1 plus 0.6 v2 plus 0 0.6 v2 is equal to, we have a negative three here, we move it over, make it a positive three. All right. Now, this is two equations and two unknowns we need to solve. These guys are really the sort of like the punchline. And at this point, you're, you're free to do what you want. A lot of calculators, you can just dump equations, system of equations in, hit the solve button, you get V1 and V2, no problem. I'm not sure what calculator you're using or even if you know how to do that in your particular calculator. So in this course, I'm basically gonna solve all of these guys using matrix methods, which really is just about as fast. So what we're gonna have here, if you remember, is the general, the general deal for a matrix equation. We've done this in the last set of lessons also. Matrix A times X is equal to B. X is a placeholder. It just means what, it, it, X doesn't necessarily mean X because we don't have any X's here. It just means whatever I'm hunting for. Here I'm hunting for V1 and V2. So the way you write this matrix equation is you need a matrix A, which is your coefficients on the left. So we have 1.7. Here we have negative 0.5. Here we have negative 0.5. Here we have 0.6. That closes matrix A, which is the coefficients on the left. You multiply matrix A by what you're hunting for, V1, V2. You write it as a vertical column matrix like this, and that equals the right-hand side, 10 and 3. If this is confusing to you, go back to either uh, the previous lessons in this sequence in the circuit analysis. I even do a little more background into what a matrix solution is. Also, I have an entire set of matrix uh, matrix algebra tutor that teaches you what a matrix is, what a determinant is, all the stuff that you're re really going to be talking about here. I kind of assume that you already know what that is. This is the matrix representation of these two equations. If you think about it, when you multiply this times this in the matrix fashion, that's what you get up here, and it's equal to 10. If you multiply this times this in the matrix fashion, that's what you get. It's equal to 3. So this is totally represents what we have here above. The reason we do that is because when we have a matrix equation like this, then what it would basically, since we have AX is equal to B, then X, which is, this is what we're calling X, what we're trying to solve for, is equal to the inverse of matrix A times matrix B. Basically, this is a matrix equation. On the left-hand side, you multiply by the inverse of matrix A. That totally eliminates this. On the right-hand side, you have to multiply by the inverse of matrix A. So on the left, you left, you're, you're end up with what you're solving for. So the bottom line is V1, V2 is equal to um, the inverse of matrix A times matrix B. The inverse of this matrix, you just type this in a, in a calculator or a computer, hit the inverse button. Every calculator has that nowadays for engineering anyway. And then the inverse of this matrix is going to be 0 0.779, 0 0.649, 0 0.649, 2.21. We'll close that off. This is just the inverse of matrix A. And then on the right hand side, we have 10 and 3. And so finally, at the end of the day, V1, V2. When you take this matrix, multiply by this matrix, and you do the multiplication in the matrix fashion, what you're going to get is 9.74 and 13.12. So that you just read it off just like a book, basically. So what you have is V1 is equal to 9.74 volts. 
V2 is equal to 13.12 volts. This is the answer. These are the node voltages that we cared about. Everything past this point, whenever we have the equations written down, everything past that is just algebra. It's all just how do you solve a system of equations. This is just two equations. You could have done it by substitution. Heck, you could have done it by graphing if you want to, to find the intersection points or whatever, the, two point, the points that are uh, common there. Um, you could have done that. Here we use matrix methods. I highly recommend that you get comfortable with matrix methods because circuit analysis is all about solving linear equations like this. So if this seems foreign to you, please go back to either volume one of the circuit analysis tutor or even go back to my matrix algebra tutor where I break it down and show you what a matrix even is. But basically, this is your matrix equation. It represents this. You're trying to solve for the voltages. So to do that, you eliminate this by multiplying by the inverse of this matrix on the left. That wipes it out. You have to do the same thing to both sides. So the inverse of this matrix is also multiplied by the right-hand side. This is the inverse of the matrix over here. This A negative 1 represents inverse. This matrix times the right-hand side gives you what you're solving for on the left. So it's just like any equation, right? 3x is equal to 4, you know? You divide by 3, you have to do it to both sides. Here, I'm trying to get rid of this stuff to solve for what I have. So I multiply by the inverse on, on the left, that wipes it out, I have to do the same thing on the right. Once you get that point, you get the voltages, the node voltages that we care about. So, if your professor says, find the node voltages, that's it, that's the answer. But, I also told you, we're done with this problem, okay, but what I, did, what I told you is that you, once you have the node voltages, you can find anything else you want in this circuit. Let's go take a look at that. We now know what V1 is. We now know what V2 is. In fact, let's write it down. V1 is 9.4 volts. We know that. Now we know V2 is 13.12 volts, right? So let's look at this for a second. Now that we know what V1 is, if we wanted to find the current in this leg, all it would be was I is equal to V over R. V is 9.4, R is 5. You divide them, that gives you the current here. If you wanted to find the current in this leg, remember this is all connected, so V2 is really over here. It would just be I is equal to V over R. 13.12 volt divided by 10, that gives you the current there. So that's that. Then you might say, well, what about current over here? Well, that's easy because now we know this is 9.4 volts, okay? So we take 9.4 volts, minus 10, that's going to give us the voltage drop across here. That's going to, that voltage V over R is going to give us a current, and that's going to give us the current here. Same thing over here. If we wanted that current, we would take V1 minus V2. That's going to give us a voltage. Divide, that's going to be the voltage across this resistor. Divided by 2 is going to give us uh, the current there. So once we have the node voltages, everything else can really be found. You can find the currents in all the branches, and once you know the currents in all the branches, you can find the voltages in all the branches. Now notice here we just stopped and found the node voltages. I want to make it clear that if you're trying to find currents in legs, if you, if you get negative values for the current in a leg, it just means that the current is going the opposite way than you, you originally drew it. So for instance, if we were trying to find the current here in this guy, let's say that was what the problem was, then if you did it by, if you took V1 minus V2, then we have 9.4 volts here, right? Minus 10, that's going to give you a negative number. And then you divide by R, you're going to get a negative current. So what that means is, see, when you take V1 minus V2, that implies that the current is going this way because you're kind of coming up here as the bigger voltage, subtracting this one off, and then you're going to get a negative voltage. That means that the current really doesn't go this way at all. It actually goes this way. That's just because of the way the node voltage is landed. So you don't have to concern yourself so much with that when you write your node voltage equations. You need to concern yourself with finding the node voltages. So, uh, but if you get in the end of the, get in the, at the end of the day when you're trying to find a current somewhere, if you do a subtraction and you get a negative number, it just means the current's going opposite of the way you kind of assumed when you, when you did that calculation. So again, to recap, you identify your essential nodes, Okay, here we have three of them. We know you're going to need two equations as a result. You identify your reference node, and then you write equations of the other nodes using these voltages that we've labeled these node voltages here. You're basically summing up currents going away from your other essential nodes, and we've shown how to do that here. We've shown that how to do that here. Once you do that, the rest of it is algebra. Beating those equations in the shape, putting them in a matrix, or if you have a calculator that can do it, you can use the calculator 
finding V1 and V2. A lot of problems are going to be over at that point if they say, find the node voltage here. You're done, right? But sometimes you'll be asked, oh, what's the current over here? What's the voltage over here? Once you know the node voltages, the entire circuit can be solved. And that's basically the node voltage method in a nutshell. I've intentionally chosen a very simple problem to start with, one that you can solve with other methods. But even I think you can see that as sort of a pain as it is to learn a new technique, it's still only two equations. And that does save you a lot of algebra. If you were to do this with Kirchhoff's laws, it would take more equations, which would take more effort on your part. So take your time to watch this lesson as many times as you need to understand what we're talking about, to understand the sign conventions, to understand how to write the node voltage equations. Then follow me on to the next section and watch the next solution of the next problem and the next problem. We'll do quite a few of these things because it's so very important. And the other bit of motivation I will tell you, so far all of the circuits we're doing are with DC, right? With constant voltage sources and they all have just resistors. But later on, when we get into AC, right, with alternating current, and when we get into capacitors, and we get into inductors, and we have a lot of things changing because the voltage is changing and going back and forth, AC, right, um, the node voltage method is still going to be used. There's some differences that we'll talk about later, but the basic idea you're going to use over and over and over and over. So make sure you understand it here because you'll be using it from here on out.